What I'm going to teach you today is about temperature conversion between Celsius, Fahrenheit, and Kelvin. You may be familiar with one of these two, Fahrenheit or Celsius, and you may be unfamiliar with Kelvin, and that's okay. On these scales, we're going to start with Fahrenheit. There's a reason why we're starting with Fahrenheit, and it's not because I'm American. It's because Fahrenheit made his thermometer from Olaus Rimmer. Olaus Rimmer had an alcohol thermometer, but Fahrenheit made his much more accurate by using mercury. Okay. So he had some scales that were set, and what he wanted to do first was find out if you had salt water and ice together and you put that in the thermometer into that salt water and ice mixture where would it be well he had already got a scale set for this because of that salt water and ice and he put it at zero degrees fahrenheit that's salt water and ice and the salt that we're talking about was ammonium chloride regular table salt is sodium chloride so it's a little bit different He then put it in just water and ice and found out that that freezing point there with just water and ice is at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. The last one, he put it in boiling water and we found out later on that that was at 212 Fahrenheit. Okay. There was one other one that he put in here. I won't you know, mention a whole lot about it. Uh, but what he did was he took his wife's temperature on her armpit and found out that it was 96 degrees. Which is fine. No worries. Well, Celsius comes along and he says, well, we've got to find some other equivalent for this that isn't just kind of arbitrary. There's got to be a reason, and we need to have a better scale than this. Okay. So what he does is he sets his scale at the freezing point of water. So at this point, we're going to talk about water. So freezing point, that's a P, excuse me, of water, H2O, and he sets his scale at zero degrees C. Zero. If water is boiling at 212 Fahrenheit, well, water boiling is a pretty good thing to use. So we're going to have the boiling point of water, and he sets his scale at 100 degrees C. Between here and here, there are 100 hash marks, so a scale of 100. Between here and here, well, 32 from 212 is 180 points. It's not a good round number. It's not easy to work with, but hang in there. I'm going to show you what we do to do so. To find a conversion factor for a scale, we need to set one scale multiplied or divided by some number. Remember, you can multiply by a fraction to divide to equal the other. So, to find out what x is, to find out what that, that uh, conversion factor is, divide by 100 on both sides. Cancels here. So we have x is equal to 180 over 100. That will then reduce to 9 fifths. X is going to be equal to 9 fifths. Okay, that's fine. But if I multiply 100 by 9 fifths, I'm not going to get 212. If I multiply 0 by 9 fifths, I'm certainly not going to get 32, because anything times 0 is 0. So what we will do is we're also going to add 32, so that we can get 0 times 9 fifths to 32. All right, so we have 9 fifths degree C plus 32 equals degrees Fahrenheit. Let's try that. 9 times 0 divided by 5, well, that's going to be 0, plus 32 equals 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So the math checks. 2, let's see, uh, 100, sorry about that. 100 times 9, because 9 times 100 is 
same as saying 9 fifths times 100, but we're going to do it longhand. We're going to get 900. Well, 900 divided by 5. I'm going to do the math here for you. Is 180. Plus 32 equals 212. So it actually worked out perfectly. The math is good, our scale is good, and our formula for converting is good. Wonderful. Well, we've got some other stuff to deal with here. One of the things that, that comes along about the same time that we start studying you know, all types of, of uh, uh, substances is Kelvin comes along and he realizes that there is another skill hidden in the background. Okay, Lord Kelvin finds out that he's been studying some gases and those gases, let me use another sheet of paper so I can explain this to you. He realizes these gases, if he plots out their temperatures versus their pressures, they all start to converge on one spot. I'll explain this. What he does is he decreases the pressure and he finds out there is a resultant temperature change that it is also going down for each of these gases. Just kind of arbitrarily drawing them here. But as he's decreasing these, he realizes that they're all going to cross at some point back here. So let's extend that out a little bit. But at some point in the back, they all cross this spot. this wrong. That's supposed to be pressure. And this should be temperature. There we go. Sorry about that. It happens. I'm freehanding it. Anyway, so find out that the temperature crosses right back here. Well, he tries to calculate where that temperature is and calls it absolute zero. Absolute zero. So he sets his scale at zero. This is absolute zero, way down here. He also finds that the freezing point on his scale is 273.15. He finds that water boils on his scale at 373.15. And those decimals matter. Don't get rid of them. His scale was the same as Celsius, so there's a hundred hash marks between here and there. There's a hundred between here and here. Then there are 273 hash marks between here and there, which means to go from the freezing point of water on the Celsius scale, we just decrease it to negative 273.15 degrees C. That's absolute zero in Celsius. So now we've completely uh, gotten the Celsius scale set the Kelvin scale set, and then there's Fahrenheit lagging behind. We have to convert to Celsius before we can go to Fahrenheit. You can't go directly from Kelvin to Fahrenheit doing the math this way. So how are we going to find out what this scale is, or what that, that number is? That value is going to be low. Okay. Well, let's find out exactly how low. So what we do, we have our 273.15 that's degree C multiplied by 9. We're going to add 32 and we're going to get the, count, the uh, value for Fahrenheit for absolute zero right here. Let's do the math. I'm always for doing the math. So we know that it was, let's move my scale up here, we know that it was negative 273.15 
multiply by 9 fifths plus 32. Let's move that over. There we go. Order of operations. We'll give us some number. So 9 times negative 273.15. I like doing the math longhand. That's just me. You can type that into your calculator just fine. But you'll find it's 5, 3.85, uh, 24. So 24. There we go. Okay, so now we've done half of it. The other half we need to divide. So now we're going to divide 24. 58.35 by 5 because it's the same as dividing and we're going to get is that 4 what's it 20 So now we're at 491.67. We're not finished because this is a negative number. We still need to add 32 to that. Well, how do you add 32 longhand? Well, you actually just switch this. It's the same, and then we'll add the negative back. Watch. So we know it's going to be 67, because 0 minus you know, anything is going to still be its thing. All right, so that's going to be a 9. That's going to be a 5, and that's going to be a 4. There's our answer right there. The absolute value, or yeah, absolute 0, not absolute value. Absolute 0 is going to be negative 459.67. Just like we did right there. So remember your formula here, and to go from Celsius to Kelvin, or vice versa, what we will do is you'll take Kelvin minus 273.15 equals Celsius, or we can do it the other way around, Celsius plus 273.15 gives you Kelvin. There's no degree sign with Kelvin. Well, what about going from... Fahrenheit to Celsius. This is just how we come up with the math at this point. Watch what happens. We're going to take this formula and we're going to reverse it. Okay, we're going to invert some as well. So we're going to take, to find out what C is, we're going to try to isolate C on this side, on that side of the equal sign. So to do so, I'm just going to scale up just a little bit. Try to keep it in frame here. So, watch the math. 9 fifths C plus 32 equals Fahrenheit. So, what we're going to do is we're going to subtract 32 from both sides. Put that in parentheses because we want to do that first. And then we're going to multiply both sides by 5 ninths. That cancels this. That provides the formula on this side and leaving only the degree C on this side. So degree C equals the degree in Fahrenheit minus 32 times 5 ninths. And that's the formula. So you can convert between Celsius and Fahrenheit, between Celsius and Kelvin. But again, you can't go directly from Kelvin to Fahrenheit you have to go through Celsius first. That's why it's still considered our standard.